Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the sports barn here. What is it? Friday the 13th, right? It seems like lately it's always Friday the 13th. I don't know why, if how that works. Maybe it's because we're losing. That's, that's probably what's going on right there. I'm Eric Arnold. I handicap baseball. Not so well lately. Uh, but hey, today's a new day and we'll just start fresh. Um, Ernest Hemingway, you know who he was? A uh, famous American author. He said, courage is grace under pressure. And that's what I'm trying to emulate. I'm, I keep thinking of that every time I throw the remote at the TV after another uh, uh, loss. Uh, it's like, all right, that wasn't very graceful. I mean, come on now. Come on, stiff upper lip. Come on, we can do this. We can't lose forever. Come on. Uh, so I'm trying to, you know, not break down into a puddle of tears. So we'll do our best. We want to be graceful here. We are under pressure. I won't lie about that. We're, we're under some pressure here. Uh, stock market collapsing. Uh, finite amount of money in the bank. We're not made of money here in the barn. Uh, we have low overhead. That's what I've always told you people. I'm an able a certain amount of freedom because we have low overhead. But we do have a finite amount of money in the bank and the stock market collapsing is not helping that. So a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure. At any rate, uh, we had four picks for you today. I've got a number of thoughts before we get to those picks. If you just can't wait, feel free to go ahead, hit your little slider button and fast forward the thing through, knock yourselves out. Um, I've told you people I do consume bar stool content. I'm a fan of theirs. I like uh, the what they do, their website, uh, you know, mo well, not most, some of their content. But there's so much of it, you could like just, you know, not interested, not interested, not interested, not interested. Oh, this is okay. You know, oh, naked woman, naked woman, oh, semi-naked woman. All right, maybe I go... Maybe I don't go past quite that quickly, but at any rate, the CEO had a podcast on the site, I guess, today. I, I listened to the beginning of it, about first half of the thing, and uh, Erica Nardini is her name. She's the CEO, I guess. Uh, uh, Portnoy owns the thing, uh, him and Penn National, and uh, they, she or Portnoy hired Nardini to run the place. Uh, so she's the CEO. She has a podcast. Well, she opens the podcast up by basically saying, all right, we, we, a lot of things, important stuff to talk about today. Uh, we're reorganizing the company because we're in a crisis. You know, I'm paraphrasing. She didn't say these words exactly. Uh, you know, what, you're in a crisis? You know, basically, I, what I gather is going on at Barstool is they're simply not making money. <laughs> that I think that they make money and then they spend twice as much as they make. So, you know, at some point, I guess somebody probably Penn National has pointed this out to them that, hey, uh, you know, our stock is down to 30 and what's going on over there because... Something ain't working here. You know, we need to report better earnings to the uh, stockholders next time around, et cetera, et cetera. So she's got all this important information she needs to give out about how they're going to reorganize the company. And then she launches into an impassioned, right at the top of the show, launches into an impassioned two, three, four minute uh, uh, defense of Roe v. Wade. <laughs> Which I just thought, this is interesting. In other words, she says, well, you know, we generally don't get into politics here at Barstool. We try to, you know, stay out and we don't really want to get, she said, we certainly can get down in the mud, uh, but we generally try to make it uh, uh, accepting of all viewpoints and right and left. And then she gets into this impassioned defense of Roe v. Wade 
and the world's going to end because it certainly looks like that's going to get overturned. And I thought, I had an epiphany. I was like, you know, Barstool should hire me. Hire me and we'll do an old style CNN crossfire type show. Now, no one remembers what that was because everybody just was born yesterday. But back in the day before CNN got woke and they were an actual news organization of some type, uh, they used to have, uh, what was his name? Robert Novak. And then they would have uh, uh, another uh, liberal, uh, Mike Kinsley, maybe? Uh, the name escapes me. Uh, the name's changed, but the idea of the show was this one guy on the right, one guy on the left, and they would argue about whatever the issue of the day was. And I don't know there is anything like that anymore. I mean, you have Rush Limbaugh, and he gives his monologues. Tucker Carlson, he gives his monologues. Uh, uh, the leftist news, they give their monologues, because that's all the news is, is just a leftist monologue on CNN or MSNBC. There's no debate. And even on uh, those type of channels where they have a uh, person of the opposite party, they have like one of them, and they have 10 of the other, and where it's just the, the guys just shouted down on Fox, I guess they got, what what's that guy's name, Juan uh, Williams. Uh, and then they got like four other guys that are conservative. Uh, and then on MSNBC, I'm not even sure they have conservatives on there. You know, it, Joe Scarborough, is he can, it certainly is not a conservative. So I guess he's their token conservative. So on the leftist channels, they don't even have Republicans on. So <laughs> I don't know there is anything out there like this. And I'm thinking that would be a really big draw as far as a podcast. That that would be a hit, I think. Just a complete hit. where Because people want to hear this stuff. Uh, they want to hear... Uh, the other side get put in their place, damn it, whether you're on the right or the left. Uh, they want to uh, root for their team anymore. You know, hell it is. Politics is almost getting like sports, where it's, I'm rooting for my team, damn it, and, and I hate the other team, and I want them to lose. And so I think it would be a big winner as far as ratings goes. Um yeah, it would be good content. I really think it would be. Now, as far as, you know, hey, they should hire me. Yeah, well, I don't really expect they're going to hire me because why would they? You know, you could probably find uh, a 10 of me out there and they're probably twice as good, more experienced and what have you. Other than it's my idea. You know, there, there's that. But other than that, you know, they could just rip off my idea. People do that all the time and just uh, do it themselves. Um, but then on the other hand, I don't need them either. You know, I could do this on my own. The only trick is I need a liberal. I need, you know, a Democrat who has the time and the interest to debate the issues. And that would be the trick. So, you know, hey, yeah, if anyone's out there and they think that they're smarter than I am and their issues are so much more compelling uh, that the woke agenda is so much more compelling than uh, the conservative individual responsibility freedom agenda. Well, then, hey, if you get the guts and you think it'd be interesting and uh, you want to uh, do that sort of thing, let me know. And we'll see if we can hook that sort of thing up. Because I think it would, uh, I mean, it could make both of us a lot of money. All right, it could make most of a could make us money. I don't know if it would make us a lot of money. It'd make us money, maybe. It, it, I think, in a minimum, it would be worth exploring. Let's put it that way. Um, it'd be good content. I think it'd be informative. Who knows? I mean, you might find that uh, you might get people that would watch the damn show and start thinking just a little bit, maybe see the viewpoint of the other side that, oh, well, I didn't really think about that. I've never met. That's a point you made that I've never really thought about. Uh, that's interesting. You know, and you get both sides to do that. Then maybe start to heal the divide in this country as the country is uh, 
slowly and maybe not even slowly being ripped apart. Um, maybe that's a starting point. So that was a, an epiphany I had. I thought, well, that's good content. It certainly would be great content. Um, I don't know. I, we'll see if that goes anywhere other than what an idea. And then I'm on to the next thing. Uh, or I actually attempt to find this liberal. You know, that's the missing piece. I could talk all day on my side of the issues, but I need somebody to present the woke agenda, you know, and not, you know, someone that actually believes that bullshit. Well, someone that actually thinks it's a good idea to go woke in this country and take us down the road to uh, uh, socialism and or communism. Somebody thinks that's a great idea. That's who I need. <laughs> That's who I need. I need a communist, said no one ever, except me. Now, I need a communist. <laughs> any rate, um, the Sixers, 76ers eliminated last night uh, to no one's shock except my brother. He actually said this before the game. He said, I think the Sixers are better than the Heat. Now that we have all our guys, I think we're better than the Heat. And I just sat there and was like, I thought to myself, you're betting this game then, right? And of course he wasn't because I don't know if he even believes his own bullshit. It's like, have you watched these games? Did you watch the Heat just destroy the Sixers by 35 points down in Miami? And you're going to sit here and tell me that you think the Heat are not as good as the Sixers? Damn, dude. But, you know, that's a handicapping lesson there for you. Be careful betting your own teams because sometimes you just get wrapped up in irrational exuberance or irrational pessimism. And you can't see clearly sometimes when you're playing your own teams. So they're going to lay it all on James Harden. Um, I think he shot twice in the second half. But... It, Embiid gave him very little. He was, I think, just exhausted, just tired. Just he, he, he missed a week, and I don't know he ever snapped back into shape. They don't have a lot of support for these guys. Their bench is very short, the Sixers. The Heat have a deep bench. They were just running fresh guys at them, fresh guys at them, just wore them out. So... Uh, the Sixers, yeah, that's not, they're not in great shape because James Harden is, I think he's just, he's just shot. He's done. He's, there's nothing there anymore. So, yeah, you want to blame him? I guess. I mean, you know, he's old. He's old. You're, you're beating up the old man. Come on, that's ageism. Bam. Old man, you bastard. Ugh. He's, he's, he's just old. It's nothing, you, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. So, adios, Sixers. I really don't care. <laughs> don't care, Sixers. Sorry. I, I like Jimmy Butler. I'm happy he won. I'm happy he won. I'm, I'm hoping he goes on. I'm hoping that the Bucks eliminate the Celtics tonight. I really hope that happens. Uh, but, at any rate, uh, what else? I'm um, going to have a show here, I think right after this one. This Kathy Barnett issue is exploding here in Pennsylvania. And I'm thinking this is right in the wheelhouse here of the politics barn here in Pennsylvania. So I think I got to weigh in on this Kathy Barnett issue and uh, endorse somebody for the United States Senate race uh, here in the uh, GOP primary next Tuesday. Uh, we got to endorse somebody. So uh, is it going to be Kathy Barnett? Is it going to be Dr. Oz? Well, you better, uh, uh, Dave McCormick, you better stay tuned uh, to Politics Barn issue uh, or episode following uh, our four picks. Our four picks. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull them up. Now, we've been losing. Now, unless you're the Flamingo Kid, now he thinks we're winning. Uh, this guy once, oh, as the legend goes, went to the dog track and found, an old, found a program that somebody had uh, discarded. 
uh, and being the enterprising soul that he is, just picked it up and used that free program rather than paying for a program. He, there's a free one just laying here. Okay. So they used the free program, him and, uh, well, uh, Earl Carey, and they won. They won all night long using this old program. And as it turned out, it was an old program. It was from the previous day. It wasn't even the, the current day's program. So I don't know, at some point, midway through the card, after they'd won four or five races, they figured out these horses or, or dogs aren't matching up with what's out there on the track. What the, This is yesterday's program. So the Flamingo Kid you know, using yesterday's program, thinking I'm winning. It's like, we did not win. We, we had... The Mariners, the Diamondbacks, and the Rangers, and they all lost Wednesday. They all lost. Weren't even particularly close. He thinks I'm winning because he's looking at the wrong day's program. It's like, geez, how do you go through life like that? My God. But it's not his fault I'm losing. It's not God's fault. It's my fault. So I, I got to get this straight. We're, go we're going to show grace, damn it. Grace under pressure. The Mariners, the Mariners, we're going to, uh, after they shit the bed against the Phillies, here's where I think the value is. And, you know, I'm, I'm really trying hard not to go to sad town here, but it's like, look, I think this is an okay explanation. You tell me if you think this is makes any sense or you go, that's stupid. That, 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 that makes no sense at all. You, you got to get paid here. In other words, I don't want this game unless it's plus 200 or more. You know, we're going up against Max Scherzer. You, you need to pay me. You need to pay me because I think this is a pretty risky bet. But I think there's value here. Scherzer generally wins about two-thirds of his starts. Uh, like Casey Stengel said, you can look it up. Two-thirds, that's 200. In other words, uh, 200 equates mathematically to about 33%. So do we think we have a better than 33% chance of beating Max Scherzer with the crummy Mariners? <sighs> Believe it or not, I think we do. Um, I like it that it's the first game of the series. I do think teams come in and uh, try to get that first game to try to just put everybody at ease. And, and take the pressure off that, hey, all right, we're not going to be in this city and just lose and get swept. You know, we get that first game, then we can relax and just say, all right, all right, all right, we got that first game, and now, you know, the weekend's not going to be a total disaster, and uh, maybe we can go to a nice restaurant some one of these nights and uh, just have a nice meal and not have it taste like shit because we're on a five-game losing streak. Um, so I think we're it's Friday. I like that. Uh, Marco Gonzalez, he's one of these sneaky pitchers that doesn't have a great record seemingly, but his team wins a lot of his starts more than you would expect. So I like that we have him going tonight against Scherzer. I, I like that. And then the Mets are one of these teams that we're looking to play against. In other words, I keep telling you people, the season's a marathon, and they've jumped out to a big old lead now. Now, if they keep going the way they're going, they're going to win 108 games. Is this team as good as the 1986 Mets? I don't think it is. It's a good team, but I don't know if it's that good. So, you know, they're hot right now, but more often than not, these kind of teams come back. They regress to the mean. They back up a little bit. They're going to take a week off. We're hoping that week off starts tonight. And that and, and all these games now are low scoring. The Mariners have a good bullpen. So I could see this being a 2-3, two, 3-2 three, three, two game either way. And maybe the Mariners steal it. Uh, um, I doubt they're going to just go out there and bludgeon Max Scherzer and win 7-2. to two. But I would expect this is going to be a low-scoring game. And I think the Mariners have the pitching 
to stay in that kind of game, maybe to steal it. Uh, so that's the thinking there, where uh, we're going to try. It, we got to get paid, and I'm not going to play this until that number gets. I probably won't play that game until damn near game time, just because I think that number is going to float up and up and up, and you know, up over 200 is where we want it. So that's thinking there. Uh, Orioles, Tigers. Uh, here's the thinking. The Orioles are playing pretty good baseball suddenly. You know, they've won like eight out of the last 12 games. Who would have thought? I mean, that suddenly you look at their lineup and go, well, it looks kind of, kind of shitty. Just remember the average of batting average right now is 233. That's your average batting average. It's the worst probably in modern baseball history. I think it's even worse than it was in 1968. That's like your seminal year of the pitcher where they had to uh, lower the mound because the pitchers had become so dominant and nobody could hit anymore. So much like taking a spider tack off the ball uh, and now they're deadening the ball. It's, it's really 1968 all over again where they're trying to change all the rules trying to get some offense back in this game. Um, but you know, the top three guys in the Orioles lineup, they're all hitting well over 233. So the Orioles have some offense. They've got a half-decent bullpen. Uh, the Tigers right now just suck. That team just stinks right now. They have a lot of talent. They have a lot of young talent. I think that they are going to be better than they are now. I think the team actually at some point is going to be good. But sometimes these teams don't take that linear whoop line straight up and they just improve every year. Sometimes the team will like take a regress a year. It just didn't happen that year, you know, and things didn't click. We brought up Spencer Torkelson a year too soon. He did nothing. You know, this guy had a bad year. That guy got hurt, blah, blah, blah. And it just didn't happen that year. And then, boom, they, they have a big year the next year. Maybe this is the year where they're just not, it's just not happening for them. So I don't know. But right now, I think it, we, we're okay playing against the Tigers here, I think. We're getting paid to play against the Tigers here. Uh, we're the line, the, t not the line, the records show the Orioles are a better team than the Tigers. The Orioles are three, four games ahead of them in the standings. So. All these reasons, I think getting paid here, 132, I, I'm okay with that. Let's let's go ahead here and we'll take a shot with the Orioles, who just took two out of three in St. Louis, by the way. That is not easy to do, and they just did it. So, and, it's, uh, and we're getting paid here with this team? Yeah, yeah, give me the Orioles. The Braves, Padres, we're getting Max Freed is about to break through as the next Verlander, the next Scherzer. This guy, the next Kershaw, this guy just wins. And we're still getting value with the guy. We're still getting some value with this guy. Um, only having to lay 148 here against the Padres. It's still, the Padre team doesn't scare me. They got a good record. And I'll, you know, I'm, but, you know, I don't like Hugh Darvish. I love playing against Hugh Darvish. He's one of those guys we love to play against. One of those big strikeout guys. But doesn't win that often. Perfect. So this is a great matchup for us. Uh, like the Braves. And then lastly, this is another kind of if-then game. <sighs> Taking a shot with the Phillies. It's like, ugh, I got to get paid. I will not take a shot with the Phillies unless I get paid. That number has got to be over 200 for me to play this game. Uh, I do not want it any other way. Uh, Kershaw is Kershaw. He's, you know, like Scherzer. These guys are great. But they do lose occasionally. They don't win every game. And if we can find a spot where we're getting paid, this is what we want. Kyle Gibson, another one of these guys we like. The The not overwhelming stuff guy, but gets you deep in a game and wins more than he loses, surprisingly enough. 
the Phillies are starting to play a little better. They had a big, I, I would argue possibly what happened last night with the Phillies could push them to another level. In other words, a typical Philly game, they get a big lead and blow it. And it's like, whoop, that, that just happened to the Mets. Uh, they were up 7-1 to the Mets and lost. Well, they were up 7-1 last night to the damn Dodgers, and the Dodgers tied the game at 7. It's like, well, here we go again. Well, they pulled it out. They pulled it out. They actually managed to score two runs, hold the Dodgers in the night somehow, pulled it out. So I'm thinking this could be a springboard for the Phillies. The Dodgers, especially Kershaw, he didn't pitch that well against the Phillies, if you can believe that. Never has. That stems back to when he was young. He came up against the Phillies when they were great, and the Phillies beat him a couple different times in the playoffs. And I think that's carried through his whole career. He just doesn't. That's not one of the teams that he's great against. So uh, all these reasons, getting paid plus 200 here, yeah, yeah. We'll take a shot with the Phillies. Uh, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead. See if they can't go back to back here on the Dodgers aren't playing that well. They lost two out of three in Pittsburgh to Pittsburgh. My God. So you, you, that Dodger lineup suddenly isn't that scary when Max Muncy's hitting 110 and Cody Bellinger continues to do Cody Bellinger. It's like, what happened to this guy? He was an MVP. And now all of a sudden this guy's just falling off the map and he just cannot hit the ball hard anymore. So, it, 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 suddenly Dodgers lineup isn't that scary. And this is a big number we're taking a shot at here. We can get paid. We could really get paid here tonight. So I think we've got some four pretty good games here. I, I'm, I'm thinking tonight's going to be a night we have an okay night. You know, we're, we're one of these two big underdogs we're going to win with. I'm going to say that. We're going to win with one of these. And then the other two, let's hope we put them in our pocket and we get back on the winning track. And then everybody will start feeling better. And by everybody, I mean me. So, good, thanks. Glad to see you all. Stay tuned for uh, my endorsement in the United States Senate race of uh, Pennsylvania, GOP. And we'll probably not have an episode this weekend. I'm going out of town. And unless I, you know, it's possible I may just be sitting in a hotel room bored and just put the phone up and go, hi, phone, and uh, just make a short and dirty episode. Uh, that could happen. But otherwise, we'll see you Monday. Uh, thanks for being here. Good, great, thanks. Out. Eric Arnold, out.